my name is Paweł Wieczorek. Uh, I work with Collabora. And in July 2023, I joined its kernel CI development team. Uh, today, I would like to share with you what we've been up to, what's still in the works, and uh, how it could be of benefit to you. Kernel developers, kernel maintainers, uh, automation and quality assurance engineers, and everyone involved or just interested in similar efforts. Uh, I will start with uh, a short introduction to what Kernel CI uh, as a project uh, is. Next, I will move to its goals and areas, key areas of focus. After that, I will describe current status of things. Uh, I will also talk about how Kernel CI integrates with uh, external systems. Uh, finally, I will show you uh, how to try it out on your own and share some closing thoughts. Uh, let's start by explaining what the Kernel CI project really is. Uh, if we go back uh, a few years uh, to its early days in 2014, it started as an independent initiative by ARM SOC maintainers. Um, it later became an automated system for kernel builds and boot testing on embedded ARM platforms through collaboration with Linaro developers. Uh, its dashboard uh, is what I believe many of you might already be familiar with. Uh, throughout the years, requirements for this system grew, and in many cases to the point where uh, its classic architecture, or now referred to as legacy, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll get to this in just a second. Uh, well, this classic architecture could no longer support uh, many of those cases. This resulted in timed out result requests, high infrastructure costs, as well as uh, maintenance costs. It eventually led to the idea of rethinking uh, the design for the new system and its instance hosted at kernelci.org, which I will later refer to uh, just as a service. Uh, also, uh, putting a new system in place is why the former one uh, is now being referred to as legacy. Uh, system and the service aren't, however, uh, the only components of the Kernel CI project. Uh, together with growing requirements, also, the whole ecosystem expanded from CI reports database uh, through GitLab pipeline definitions. Although this project is only backed by kernel CI developers uh, and it aims at providing easy to reuse GitLab pipeline definitions for kernel development needs uh, up to improving tests quality. Uh, which is an effort that only makes use of kernel CI systems, but its scope is uh, far different from just tests execution automation. If you'd like to learn more about uh, the latter two topics, uh, my colleagues will be giving talks this afternoon, uh, one in the uh, room behind us on your left, and uh, the, uh, the other one in the same room as we are here now. Uh, back to the growing ecosystem. This is the main reason uh, why the new system had to be designed with uh, ability to integrate with various services easily in mind. What is important to remember from this very short introduction is that Kernel CI as a project expanded and evolved into an umbrella of various efforts. Service and system uh, are only components of the whole project, and uh, service scaling and maintenance issues mainly led to redesigning the whole system. And the moment you decide the system needs a redesign is also the time when it's useful uh, to reevaluate its goals and key areas of uh, focus. Automated testing of Linux kernel isn't, however, a new problem. There are various tools and solutions uh, available that have already solved similar challenges. 
simply running a new kernel CI uh, as a service is not an end goal on its own. Uh, let's uh, get a better perspective at various testing efforts for Linux kernel. Don't worry, uh, we'll dissect this whole uh, diagram uh, in a second. And it's also important to note that uh, testing landscape for uh, Linux kernel is not just a two-dimensional input to output diagram. It has to be approached uh, with, uh, mm, in a multi-dimensional uh, way with uh, different efforts tackling the issues from different directions. And going from the top, we've got you, kernel developers, maintainers, uh, and uh, all involved uh, engineers. We also have got uh, all the uh, input data uh, for uh, tests to be run, like uh, git trees and specific branches, uh, patches coming from patchwork, uh, sometimes uh, only uh, CLI tools that provide uh, proper input for testing, or various uh, version control systems like GitLab, for example. For example. Uh, we also uh, have to take into consideration all the test plans like K-self-test, LTP, or Smudge. Uh, we have our CI systems like the kernel CI, uh, like Cookie, which rely on uh, laboratories for running tests on devices, for example, Lava, LabGrid, uh, or Beaker, for instance. We also have got the uh, place to store all those uh, various test results for uh, KCI DB. And of course, those results need to be delivered uh, to you as a feedback, uh, either through email reports, maybe through regression reports, uh, or just uh, by basic data analysis uh, tools, or preferably in a UI. Uh, for example, a web dashboard. To put the efforts that I mentioned earlier on this testing landscape, I mentioned the uh, GitLab, uh, KCI GitLab um, pipeline definitions for reuse with uh, kernel CI system. And I mentioned also test plans, which you might uh, learn more at uh, later talks. Now, let me just uh, say a few more words about the KCIDB, uh, which will not be covered uh, in uh, talks uh, during this event. A KCIDB is a test results collector from various sources. It does not have to be just a kernel CI systems. Uh, it collects also from uh, zero day, uh, for example, and it's the point of truth for results delivery. Uh, it, uh, it will uh, be a uh, source for reporting or finding all the regressions uh, from failed tests submitted by those various test systems. It also provides uh, easy to use UI using Grafana dashboard for all the uh, data stored there. Having a clearer view on all those aspects, uh, it's really important to ask ourselves uh, which area should kernel CI focus on to bring the most impactful improvement for all our workflows. And first and foremost, it is crucial to address the issues faced by developers, maintainers, and all other contributors working on any other aspect will not make much of a difference uh, unless we are able to build tighter community around testing Linux kernel. This is also the main reason behind recently created uh, community engagement working group. Uh, its aim is to connect with kernel maintainers, discuss and improve uh, test quality uh, for their subsystems, and help to onboard new users to kernel CI systems and services, among other goals. Uh, it's crucial to provide the commu this community with tools and mechanisms 
uh, they can rely on, uh, even if it means redesigning kernel CI system and service. The focus of the new system had to shift to quality rather than quantity. Instead of enabling every known test on every platform the legacy system supported, just a small subset of features supported there uh, was chosen to start with. Um, others will be enabled uh, in smaller steps to prevent potential test failures from turning into a noise. Choice criteria and priorities uh, will be set on uh, the basis of maintainer's expectations uh, who'd like to engage in the new system uh, adoption uh, and shift their development workflows uh, to make use of uh, kernel CI. Now, let me recap quickly uh, the project goals. The key focus is to engage the community and uh, work uh, according to the feedback uh, received from uh, maintainers and only add what we can and will track instead of being overwhelmed with results flood. Now that we know what kernel CI is uh, and uh, what its goals are, uh, let's have a look uh, at recent updates and its current status. Um, let's have a look at the uh, core of uh, all those efforts, so kernel CI system. Instead of hard to scale monolithic application, the legacy was architectured, uh, the new system provides only thin abstraction layers. They have been adjusted uh, to cover all the specific cases to the, uh, uh, to the kernel testing domain. Two main parts are the API, uh, which uh, some of the endpoints you can see above, uh, and a set of pipeline services, uh, which we have an example uh, down below, and we will go through this example in just a moment. Just a moment. Uh, for now, let me give you just a few more details uh, about uh, these components. The API layer is responsible first and foremost for ingesting code, either from Git trees or uh, patches, as well as test plans, uh, which you might recall from the uh, ecosystem landscape. Uh, the other thing it's responsible for is creating and maintaining a tree structure of all the steps taken uh, when processing this input. It also provides a mechanism uh, of events which client application can then subscribe to instead of just polling this API for changes. Um, such an API allowed uh, the kernel CI team to, for example, quickly prototype tools uh, that were in use during system development. Uh, one of such tools uh, is uh, dashboard uh, linked below, but uh, please Note that it was only uh, a development tool. Uh, it was not aimed for end users and uh, other web dashboard is also still in development uh, as a UI for the, uh, end users. Also, although uh, the new kernel CI system uh, already is equipped with uh, its own database under the hood, uh, actual results delivery to the end users will rely on data from KCIDB mentioned earlier, which will have current CI's tests results submitted uh, from Pipeline. Uh, pipeline uh, resembles workflow orchestrator, uh, like, uh, for example, Apache Airflow, if you're familiar with this tool. Uh, key pipeline tasks are monitoring uh, kernel Git trees, uh, processing API events based uh, and, and then scheduling uh, predefined tasks based on processed events, as well as uh, provide reports and then submit all the results to KCIDB. For example, below we can see 
all the tasks that were uh, created and then executed by the pipeline service, which are these purple uh, items and the events that triggered those tasks on the arrows. From the uh, initial input with the uh, code on your left hand side, uh, through uh, checking whether it was a not previously known uh, kernel version, through creating a tarball uh, with downloaded code, then uh, going to scheduling actual tests, execute them in a relevant runtime up to uh, sending an email report to end user. Currently, we're at the stage of uh, minimal viable system. Uh, the scope of the new system had to be refocused to prioritize work quality I mentioned earlier. More features and use cases will come after sunsetting uh, services of the legacy system. Uh, today, Pipeline can execute tasks in four different uh, environments. Uh, it's Lava, uh, which is uh, an abstraction layer over uh, devices laboratories uh, for running tests on actual ARM-based, or not necessarily ARM, but devices under tests. But we also support running uh, tasks on Kubernetes, uh, in Docker, or natively in just a, a regular shell. This list can, uh, however, be easily extended with new execution uh, environments, like just a virtual machine uh, or uh, device lab types other than Lava, uh, which the legacy system was bound to. The key points I'd uh, like to uh, highlight once again for the new system are uh, improved system scaling, uh, and included uh, uh, support for new runtimes other than just Lava, like in Legacy, and extensibility of uh, this uh, new piece of software. As we are stabilizing the new system design, we also had to uh, include uh, integration with external services uh, in development plans. It was always supposed to be a gradual integration, taking small steps one by one. And uh, starting with the input uh, part, we are currently close to uh, having fully, full integration uh, for patchwork being available, uh, generally available with, uh, with some of the uh, integration patches already available in the pipeline for the new system. Uh, it's also worth noting that patchwork integration was one of the first uh, contributions uh, external, and I, by that I mean outside the core development team for uh, Kernel CI project, uh, by Meta's engineer uh, Nikolai Jurin. Moving to the other end of uh, the uh, ecosystem, so keeping uh, the uh, results, uh, we currently uh, already submit the um, test results from the new kernel CI system to the uh, KCIDB uh, among other uh, submitters, of course, but uh, to be able to process and deliver those results from this single point of truth. Speaking of results delivery, uh, there is also uh, an regression tracker uh, in the works, which started uh, as a pipeline stage and now is being migrated to an uh, external service for improved flexibility uh, and uh, having better control over just this part uh, of uh, results delivery. Another uh, important uh, feature that is still being worked on uh, are the bisections that were available in the legacy system and will also soon, uh, should soon be available uh, in the new one. And we of course 
cannot uh, forget about the uh, systems that uh, the CI systems rely on, so the device labs. And uh, as I mentioned before, there is no requirement uh, at all uh, that uh, the uh, new system has to be of specific type. Uh, it can be either a physical uh, laboratory or just a virtual. It can also be just a build farm that could be hooked up to the new kernel uh, CI system. But providing access to wider range of uh, device types, which might be a bit hard to maintain on one's own, could uh, further extend uh, the set of cases verified by kernel CI system. And uh, although most of current kernel CI device labs still use Lava to drive uh, the boards, including emulated one, I would like to stress it again, this is no longer uh, a limitation of uh, the system. Uh, if you now feel a, a bit encouraged to try it out on your own, you've got uh, several options, uh, varying from the managed uh, service through uh, manual steps up to semi-automatic ways uh, for trying it out. And starting with a managed service, in September uh, last year, an early access instance to the new kernel CI system has been uh, made generally available. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about it, uh, have a look at the blog post uh, published uh, with all the details uh, that uh, will lead you uh, to uh, get an access to this early access instance. Uh, if you feel a bit more adventurous and you'd like to uh, create a local deployment, a local instance for your own, you can either do it fully manually by just following the uh, documentation on uh, the creating local instance, or you can switch to the semi-automatic uh, way, uh, which is now being transferred as one of the deployment types for kernel CI system, and will be soon available in the kernel CI deploy uh, repository. The question, however, and, uh, if, uh, and if I may, uh, feedback request to you uh, would be uh, an, uh, an information. What still might be missing uh, in uh, those uh, systems that you see from your experience of uh, trying it out or setting it up on your own? Uh, what do you feel would be the highest priority of those missing items and uh, what could have been duplicated and has already been uh, resolved in uh, other way. If you uh, have an idea and uh, would like to uh, share it with us, uh, just send an email to kernel CI mailing list or just uh, let us know on uh, IRC channel uh, kernel CI on Libera chat. Uh, you could also uh, ping us on Slack if that's your preferred way of communicating. Uh, and again, I would like to encourage you uh, to have a look at the uh, community engagement working group uh, and uh, its efforts uh, in making your life a bit easier. So now, uh, just a, a quick summary of uh, uh, what we covered. We're currently at the stabilizing phase for this new system, uh, and we steadily uh, go uh, towards sunsetting the legacy one and replacing it with uh, this uh, a new one I presented earlier. And uh, the strongest focus is on delivering reliable test results and relevant reports uh, to your work to prevent maintainers uh, burnout from increasing and instead actually help solving it. Uh, also, 
solving CI needs uh, for the Linux kernel community is not just a technical challenge. Uh, in big part, uh, it's a community challenge too. Uh, that's why uh, we're dedicated to engage with maintainers, developers, and all other contributors to further improve uh, kernel testing. Uh, thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, uh, I would be happy to, to answer them. Hey, thanks for the talk. Uh, the question I have is, so what do we have to do to uh, add our own laboratory backend? So uh, in Qualcomm Landing Team Linaro, we use different tool to control the boards. Uh, it's shell tool, rather limited, but it gives you full control over the board on off and lists the board on the server. So kind of very simple uh, tool for the developers to access remote boards. Maybe it would be easy to plug it, maybe not. So what would be the tasks or how can we approach it? So the, the first uh, step to add a, a new runtime uh, environment, like uh, an, uh, a completely new device lab type, would be to uh, create a, a task template uh, that uh, would either support the um, tests that you would like to submit to those uh, uh, devices and to, to your lab, uh, or just follow the tests that are already covered in the new system and adjust this task template uh, to the uh, tests that have already been run, like uh, case self tests. Uh, but maybe you could uh, also let me know what uh, the uh, actual test, uh, test suites you're uh, particularly interested in. Uh, so this note, I cannot give you the answer because let's say we are, I mean, not because it's confidential, just because we care less about the test, but we want to have remote access to the boards. Uh, and therefore, maybe we, if we have the remote access for the board through our system, uh, and this is, you know, like everyone is working on their own piece of separate, uh, you are working on kernel CI and we have own something, so maybe it would be worth to plug our things so they will be reusable uh, in your case, because we have quite a lot of new Qualcomm boards, uh, which I guess many would benefit if they are tested. Uh, right, so... Uh... so rather, it's like, a, let's say, access to the hardware, not access to the uh, testing tests. Uh, just l let me rephrase so I'm sure that uh, we're on the same page. Uh, would you like to have an interactive access to those boards in your, uh, in your device uh, lab? Or, or is it something else that you have in uh, mind? I would like our lab to be used by Kernel CI. Sure. So, like I said before, we would start with creating a task template that would be submitted to your device type, uh, uh, device lab um, of a new type. Uh, and uh, once we are there, we would also create a test template that would be uh, then fed into the task template and then executed in your device lab. Okay. Sorry, I'm on the board of the Kernel CI and, and Gustavo and um, Pavel work together. Uh, how do you provision your machines in your lab? Do you need that piece of the puzzle too? Or are you just providing hardware? Or do you have some, some infrastructure that provides inventory provisioning on top of that hardware? Uh, okay, I don't know the exact details, but uh, we need some kind of hardware test adapters which provide uh, this control over the hardware. And then we flash it with, let's say, some stock bootloader, an unlocked bootloader, and that's it. Then the entire, uh, from this step, booting the kernel, the user space, whatever, everything is uh, by this tool which we use. So this is a client server kind of tool, very simple, using SSH as a... Uh, 
yeah, the, the tool we have, but this is only kind of one to one. So let's say if I want to use a board from my colleague or a board in our lab, I use the tool and there's the server running and I have the access, right? So we would like maybe it would make sense to uh, make it a bit something more. We also work currently on integrating this into our GitLab. So uh, Linaro creates a product called, called Linaro and there is based on GitLab. So we also put it into our GitLab pipelines so that uh, we build some kernel and then this pipeline from GitLab starts this tool and do some stuff. And does it produce artifacts? Like, uh, well, whatever. I, I <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it, this is a more complicated question. We're actually trying to work through, uh, I, I, we, we call this remote labs and trying to allow scenarios like that to be easier. I think right now it's, I know Lava makes it easy. Lava has been doing this for a number of years. Um, I think the process is still a little clunky. We're trying to smooth it out. Um, hopefully this year we can come up with the, you know, Pavel's doing a lot of work there and the rest of Calabra. So hopefully we can smooth this out. But this is, I, I think, definitely one of our priority items is examples like that. I think the trouble here is that we dislike Lava. <laughs> so. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Red Hat uses Beaker, <laughs> which is, it's Lava, but different. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? One of your slide deck shows um, you, you also tested the kernel page for review because you have a slide show the page work. If so, I have a question about, uh, as we know, um, currently uh, Linux kernel has the Linux test robot to test the pages for reviewing. So what's the difference between this? Uh, just to uh, make sure that I got it right, uh, do you mean uh, the uh, robot that tests uh, patches or runs the code from those patches? Is it uh, some kind of static uh, check? No, uh, I just saw you one of your slide deck show on uh, the title is uh, page work. Patchwork. Right, 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 right. Uh, patchwork. Sure. Uh, yeah, this one. So does it, it uh, does it imply that uh, kernel C CI also involved uh, for um, test automation for um, the contributor to submit the page to LK ML? This is kernel mailing list. Once um, those uh, contributors submitted those page to uh, the mailing list, kernel CI were involved for the test. That's something a, like the Linux kernel robot did before? Uh, that's a similar approach, yeah. Uh, so that uh, patchwork integration uh, part means that uh, patches submitted to mailing list and then processed by patchwork would be then fed to kernel CI system to run tests on. As you described, uh, it uh, sounds uh, in similar uh, in, in feature set. So I just wondering what's the difference between these, the differences? Uh, I would have to uh, um, have a closer look at the oh, robot okay, uh, you, you mentioned, and uh, then uh, we can uh, discuss the key differences. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Yeah. Somebody has to go through the mail list and find all the patches and, and, and put them in a format. Yeah. Patchwork does all that work for you, so it's just easier for the CI system to, to grab that for the patches, whereas it's that, uh, the zero day robot actually has to parse it. Yeah, yeah. The one, the one. Filter out the threads and the comments and all the bad patches and stuff. So. Okay, so for KCI, does it uh, did uh, the test of. Uh, with the automation way, or we need to manual to submit a ta task to kernel CI for some some test or something like that. So I think the nice the nice thing of patchwork is that like it provides a lot a lot of abstractions on top of uh, the Linux army, and it's like he was saying, like uh, this is this is from I think the net dev main list, if I'm not mistaken. 
and they have their own implementation of like of, of testing pets from Patchwork. That's something that net, net, the, the networking and, and BPF folks have been working for some time. And they are the ones who want to bring that kind of use case for kernel CI. So that's why they are contributing a Patchwork integration to us. And, um, and, and then you can see like those numbers are the, 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 the test results from, from what we see landing the main list, but Patchwork picks that up and then you can I'm not sure there is API for yeah, there is no API for pool for sending events from Patchwork yet. That's a discrete. That's a discrete not discrete. yet. Yeah. Uh, that's the missing part. Yeah, I mentioned that it's part. still in the works. But then there is like APIs for you to get results back in Patchwork. So that's the advantage there. You could do like a zero day, for example, who looks at a patch, test it, and send an email report. But uh, uh, that's not tracked like in any other place like this. Not sure if that answers the questions or complements it. Uh, we've got another one. Which patchworks do you support, or which patchworks are you planning to support? All of them, or because uh, NetDev is a bit special, but there's also vanilla one, and I think DRM also might have their own. Or oh, the vanilla one, which is kernel.org, uh, um, deployed, and maybe if people are deploying the same vanilla one, or with the, oh, if they're deploying upstream up, up patchwork, it should work. Maybe there's some little adaptations here and there, but uh, it's just like uh, configuring things, I guess. 